Find an angle using sine, cosine, or tangent. All right, so the first thing we need to do is find the angle that you're trying to solve for. And then you choose which trigonometric function is best to use. Sometimes, you know, you can use multiple ones. All right, so in this case, let's check it out. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to check out this. And you may have heard it, or maybe you haven't. This is a very common trigonometry teachers will say uh, sokatoa. So basically what that means is sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse, the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And the cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And then the tangent of the angle is opposite side over the adjacent side. So here, let's take a look. So if we look at sine, okay, if we look at sine, so this is the angle. So the sine of the angle would be then the opposite over the hypotenuse, 7.3 over 12.1. Right? The cosine of this angle would be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, because it's the ka. And then the tangent would be, tangent of this angle would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay? So sometimes people like to write or label the sides around it. But after you do it a few times, you'll be able to recognize it right away. Okay? Then what you're going to do is you are going to then substitute the values that you chose into one of the trigonometric functions. So here we go. So once again, so now I wrote them out. So if we wanted to do sine, right, we would do the sine of n, angle n, is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's 7.3 over 12.1. And the cosine is 9.6 over the hypotenuse, which is 12.1, and so on. So in this case, since they tell us all the sides, we can use any one of those trig functions. Okay, But usually, they'll only give you two sides. So then you have to figure out, oh, which trig function am I going to use? But this is a nice one. So you can use any one you want. OK? So now I was like, you know what? I feel like cosine today. I'm going to do cosine. All right, and it says solve for the angle by using the inverse trig function. I'm going to go over that soon. Okay, so when you're here, okay, um, you need to solve for n, right? So how you do that? You want to get rid of cosine. So you got to do the opposite of the cosine to get rid of it. Just like if you have a plus one here, you got to do the minus one. You got to do the opposite, right? You have times three. You got to divide by three. So you, so there's no well. There's no real fancy term. Sometimes there is, but I'll skip that for now. Since we have cosine here, we need to do the opposite. So that's going to be the inverse cosine. And oftentimes, it's going to be this symbol right here on your calculator that you're going to have to push. OK? And depending upon your calculator, you might have to put the angle first and then the inverse cosine. Or sometimes you have to do uh, inverse cosine and then the number. Right, so make sure you try both ways. But when you do that, then that will give you the answer for n by itself. Does that make sense? Which then turns out to be around 37.5 degrees. Right, it depends on the rounding, but it would be pretty close. And I rounded it to the nearest tenth because the question says round the nearest tenth. OK, so make sure you always do what your teacher says or the book says. Be specific. Don't forget the degree sign. Okay. All right, and that completes our problem.